Hello y'all. I'm Maggie Surfer from Surfer's Lawn Care. Now it comes to my attention that not a lot of people realize how to drive these wall pines. So today we're going to go for a basic walk. So on a lot of them, this will be your handle right here, how it's, how it's set up. And what each one of these handles does is this controls where you turn. If you pull this right handle, you're going to go to the right. If you pull this left handle, you're going to go to the left. And a lot of people get this mixed up. Sometimes they're like, oh, it will not move. And here's why. You have your brake activated. On a lot of these, if you have your brake activated, it's going to pull to one side. But also, too, a lot of times it's not going to move and it's probably going to stall on you. And it's got... And I've started to realize this a lot with the guys I work with. And not a lot of people understand, too, how to start these. So to start up a unit like this one, it's a Kawasaki FS600V, which is an 18 and a half horsepower. Um, with this one, this one does not have electric start. So in this key position, you're, you're on, it is on the off position. If you go to here, this is the off position. When you go to start this up, you need to have this lever all the way back and have your brake activated. Before you go to start it, you need to pull your choke, which this is your choke. Most of these will tell you what, what the, basically what function it does. You pull your choke, but also check right here on your fuel tank. If it, if the valve is this way, it's on. If it's this other way, like this, it is off. You want to have it on this on position right here. But also check your tank level indicator and open up your tank every once in a while. Because those do trip up. You want to look down into your tank to check your fuel level. Sorry. I'm, I'm also brand new at filming these videos. So, um, yeah. But to start this, since we have already choked it, you want your throttle on low. You don't want to normally start these at full throttle on choke. You're going to take this, grab your pull cord. It, it might feel a tiny bit of resistance since it's a bigger engine. It's, it's going to feel a tiny bit different than pulling a push mower engine recoil. And you're going to want to release your choke like this. So this is your saw adjustment. You want to hit it all the way up like this before you go No, And to turn it off, all you got to do is take your key, just like this, go like that. That will switch off your engine. But if this is electric start, you're going to have to hold it all the way over to here and it'll, you'll have your starter position. But the drive this thing, like when I first started this video, this is your, this is the steer left. This is the steer right. You want to have this bail down because what this bail does is it's a safety acknowledging that you're there. But what a lot of people get wrong is that they, they always adjust their engine. They always adjust their throttle to adjust their speed. You do not need to do that. This is what this speed controls for. This opens the valve on your hydros and adjust where the position of these handles. If with a unit like this, this is what is basically your speed adjustment. Up here is all the way like completely wide open, full valve. So you're going to be going at as fast as pace. Then that's about middle speed, which I don't know how fast that, I don't know how many miles per hour that is, but that's more like a crawl speed or like a slow walk. And this is not going anywhere. And with this, what's different too is you'll have this handle right here. This is your neutral lockout. So all you gotta do is push up on it and it locks it right there. The perfect example is over here on right there. Right now, when you go to start this, you don't need a neutral lock on. Some of these you can just go through and push them. Some of them it's like a clip on the handle. With these units, you're always going to want to check, do a full walk around, check your oil level, check your fuel level, and check your hydro level. I work for a dealer, as when I'm the youngest mechanic there, but I see a lot of people on these completely empty, and you do not want that. That is not healthy for your hydro unit. 
But also too, before you ever run, like every day, check your air filter, please. The deal, your guys will thank you. It gives a longer life. But always do a walk around on this unit, on your machines. And I see a lot of common mistakes of people not understanding how to drive these two. These kind of units can get away from you, but all, but if it gets too dangerous, all you gotta do is release this bar right here. And the X marks and almost all of them are the same. They'll have a safety in the handle. When you release that, that will kill your engine. It will kill your blades. Which, which is actually a good thing. The difference is between electric start and a recoil start engine too is that you don't have any battery. All your electric is generated in a stator core underneath this flywheel. There, it feels like a alternator underneath it. But with these units, they might be tricky at first to understand, but the best place to practice them is in a big open parking lot on a grass field or in a backyard that's a half acre. And also, you don't see a lot of these bad boy units out there because of these are newer. They're, uh, they've only been in production since 2017. So not a lot of people know about them. But these are good units. They're built really robust and they're built really well. Normally, the people who sell them will be your local Kubota dealer. Normally. That's how it is in my area. I live in Northern Kentucky. So, um, yeah. Down here you have your hydro units. These are the Hydro Gear Z 3100s, which means they have a filter underneath them that you gotta change out about every 100 hours. You gotta change your hydro fluid, which ensures longer life of, of the hydroids and your transmissions. But this unit, you adjust your height of cut by pins. And this is not, this is a different, each machine will have a different readout for your height of cut. But on these bad boy units, you're going to have a height adjust. It's going to tell you right here, but also in the manual. You can always order extra stickers of these on bad boy parts online. And your grease circs are up underneath the spindle housings underneath here. But with these units too, is you're going to notice you have this cotter pin up here. Right there. Sorry if this is shaky, I'm still getting used to doing filming and YouTubing. Um, but that adjusts your, um, that's basically your uh, transaxial bypass. So basically it puts in in neutral, you just release your brake and you activate your neutral lock. And when you're in neutral, you want to have your handle all the way back. Also with these units too, is the cut. You need, you need to have your throttle all the way up. You can all have your throttle half or low throttle when you're cutting. You need to have your throttle all the way up when you're cutting. Because if you don't, it can cause an increased carbon buildup in your exhaust system and, and it can damage the engine. These engines are designed to be running at low throttle or high throttle or medium throttle. But not you don't want to be running it all day at medium to low throttle. That's only when you're doing transport. The difference is with some of these units too is your grass flap is actually rubber. There's some units like Dex Marks I've seen that come into my sh that come into where I work that have plastic grass flaps. You, you want a rubber grass flap, but a lot of these too, they will let you basically pull them up out of the way so you just have your discharge open like that. And that helps with if you're cutting through really tall grass, it keeps it from basically uh, windrowing the grass, basically. But I'm going to do a demonstration on how you drive this. On position, choke, recoil, unchoke it, increase throttle. Basically, take this handle, move it up, and that's it. 
going to build three speed. Right now we're going at, at slow speed, but I can adjust it up higher. What? And I'm pulling this handle to the left, and you can see I'm steering to the left. But if I pull it to the right, I'll steer it to the right. And normally these will have a salty on the back of them. These will normally have a sulky on the back of them if you buy one. But you're going to have these weight plates, these are called. Each one of these, like, basically is a standard plate that goes on. It's almost like it's plate steel. And these counteract the weight of, of a... Basically, they're on there when you don't have a sulky, this acts as more weight on the rear end. But once we, like, these do, these plates right here. This is what the rear of the machine underneath looks like. But when you have a sulky on that goes like right here where these pre-drilled pre holes are, you're going to want to take all these plates off. You're going to want to make this back in not have that weight there. And on a lot of these, like these bad boys, you can order an extra kit that supplies a special bracket that goes up here. And you can take those extra weights and put them right here on the front of your machine. And one thing I see a lot of people do, especially the homeowners, is you want to wear tennis shoes, boots, or closed-toed shoes. No sandals. I, uh, you never want to wear sandals when you're using one of these units. At all. This is the dealer that I got it from. Tri-State Capota. They're out of... This is in Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. I'm in the northern Kentucky area. I'm... That's where I'm from. But one thing you want to look at when buying units like these, especially your commercial, is your dealer support. You want to have good dealer support. Because the better dealer support you have and the better you know your dealer, the easier it is to, if anything goes wrong, or warranty, or to get parts, the easier it is to basically go get them. And sometimes it's cheaper if, you, if you're ordering from a local dealer. These Kawasaki engines are some of the best engines out there on the market. This is not a product video. This is not sponsored. Basically, I bought this with my own money. You've probably just been like, who's talking? It's been me. I don't know who's been talking. I just don't know how to work this camera well because I don't normally film. But um, these are, but the Kawasaki engines are built really well. You see this symbol right here. That means check it every day. Do that. And before you even use these units, read for the manuals. It's better to read the manual, understand, oh, it takes more time, but it saves you a whole lot. Like, I do lawn care. I do like 20 yards, a, like a week or sometimes a day. But one thing that will always help you is if you read the manuals on these machines. But also too, um, I always pay attention to this. What that means is when it's basically, right now it's on its low position, when you pull it up, that activates your PTO. When you push it down, it stops your PTO. You cannot start any kind of unit with the PTO engaged. Your PTO needs to be turned off. And, I'll, and you'll have your hour meter normally, it's on this side. Whenever, also too, is whenever you stop this unit after using it, let it idle down. Like put the, like put on the lowest dial, let it, let it just sit there for like two to three minutes. Because it's better for the, um, it's better for the engine to let it idle down because of, if it's going full force, you'll get uh, what's called a um, backfire. And it's like a really loud kaboom. It doesn't hurt the engine, but it's not the healthiest for these kind of engines. And this is a Kawasaki FS600V engine. It takes right about two, two to two and a half quarts of oil. This is your oil filter right here. Don't touch it when the engine's been running because it's hot. But your oil drain hose is right here. On this, you just route it right here and you can and you can set an oil pan up underneath your wheel to drain out the oil. Or you can stick it right down through this hole right here and 
right there. But yeah, this is how you run one of these commercial walk-by units.